Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Asa and today I'm going to talk about this enclosure that I designed and built for my Prusa XL 3D printer. A few months ago I finally got my Prusa XL kit and I made a video where I assembled and reviewed it. One of my main complaints is that at the price point for the Prusa XL it didn't come with an enclosure. I set out to remedy this, so I designed and built my own. In this video, I'll talk a little bit about my design process, and I'll do an overview of the build. Now, since starting this project a few months ago, Prusa has released their own enclosure kit, and to be perfectly honest, if I was going to do this all again, I'd probably just buy their kit. My nights and weekends are worth a little more to me than the cost savings of a DIY kit versus the one that they design and manufacture. That being said, I'm really pleased with my design. Like almost all of my video content, I'll publish all of the files for this for free, so please let me know if you build your own or use my CAD files as a starting off point for your own design. Overall, I'm really pleased with how my enclosure turned out. It's robust, I think it's aesthetically pleasing, and I get all of the benefits of an enclosure. If you're watching this, I assume you know why you might want an enclosure for your 3D printer, but if you don't, I'll link a video in the description to my review of the Prusa enclosure for the Mark III and Mark IV, which goes into the background of the benefits. I have some future work planned for this enclosure, like adding more lighting and a built-in filtration system, so if you're interested, please subscribe so you don't miss it. I'll be covering a few different topics in this video, so feel free to use the chapters to jump around based on what you're interested in. I'll briefly talk about my design process. I'll go through the build in quite a bit of detail, and then I'll touch on tools you'll need, both optional and required, and the materials that I used. My design process for the build was actually pretty rudimentary. I started just by looking at examples of what other people had designed for their Prusa XLs, and also I looked at enclosure design for Prusa Mark III's, Prusa Mark IV's, Really, I started by narrowing down just some basic design requirements. I knew I wanted a rigid structure with transparent sides. From there, I kind of designed backwards based on the materials that were readily available at the home store. I'll touch on this more later since I recommend if you take on this project or a similar one, you should source your materials from an industrial supplier instead of a home store. You'll save quite a bit of cost this way. I went to the local home store and got the main materials for the build. This ended up being 8th inch thick angle aluminum and 8th inch thick polycarbonate sheet. Then I made a very simple sketch of the overall structure of the enclosure, and I went ahead and modeled a corner piece to attach three angle aluminum parts together. Next, I designed two 3D printed parts to hold the vertical piece of the enclosure in place. These attach the angle aluminum that I cut for the enclosure to the Prusa XL itself. They connect directly to the extruded 30 by 30 aluminum that builds the frame of the Prusa XL. The angle aluminum bolts to the 3D printed part with a simple M3 bolt and a nut, and then the 3D printed part attaches to the Prusa XL's 30 by 30 millimeter extruded aluminum, and for this I got a bag of T-nuts off of Amazon. And from there I really just started building. I made rough measurements of the Prusa XL and started cutting the main structural frame pieces of the enclosure. I'll talk about this a little more when I cover tools, but I wanted to make sure you could make this with primarily hand tools, so I did cut a few of the main structural pieces with a hacksaw and cleaned it up with a file. I certainly could have cut all the angle aluminum with a handsaw. It took a little extra work to make sure to file them down to the exact same size but it was a heck of a lot faster to just use a normal wood miter saw. I changed the blade on my miter saw recently, so I'm confident it's nice and sharp, and I made sure to wear good PPE, eye protection, a face shield, and hearing protection. Then I clamped the pieces in securely, and it made quick work of the aluminum. And after the miter saw, I still cleaned up all the cuts with a hand file. I continued the build by bolting the 3D printed parts to the frame of the Prusa XL, and attaching the vertical extruded aluminum. At this point, I was just attaching everything with clamps. I hadn't drilled holes in the angled aluminum yet. I was just placing angled aluminum in place, clamping it, measuring, and making sure I had good fits. I worked around the enclosure, cutting angled aluminum and clamping it in place. I also 3D printed the corner pieces so that I could attach them together, once again with clamps for now. After everything was assembled and clamped together, I worked around the enclosure, around each joint, and marked where I needed to drill the holes just by scoring the surface with a drill bit. I either turned the drill bit with my fingers to mark it, or powered it with the drill itself for a few turns, just to mark the positions. 
Once I marked out where all of the holes needed to be drilled, I disassembled basically everything and used a center punch so later I would get good drilled holes. I drilled a few of these holes with a hand drill just to prove that it could be done, and then I used my drill press to speed things up. The process was easy. I drilled a pilot hole with a small drill bit. The center punch hole helped center the bit and get a good cut. Then I drilled the full size hole. I used three millimeter nuts and bolts for almost the entire build. The only exception was the hinges. And to give a little bit of play and forgiveness, I drilled the holes to four millimeters. After drilling all of the holes, I cleaned up burrs using a hand file, and I also used a hand drill and a countersink bit to clean burrs off the edge of the drilled holes. I did drill a few holes in situ and used a vacuum to clean up the aluminum chips, but I definitely prefer doing this on a drill press. Then I designed two more 3D printed parts. The purpose once again was to connect the angle aluminum to the extruded aluminum of the Prusa XL body. Once again, these parts use an M3 nut and a bolt to connect to the aluminum of the enclosure, and then they use an M3 bolt and a T-nut to connect to the Prusa XL itself. Once again, I used a drill bit to mark the location of the center of the holes I wanted to drill. I used a center punch so that the drill bit would be well centered and wouldn't chatter across the surface, and then I drilled holes and assembled. These vertical 3D printed parts also include features that will help hold the polycarbonate sheets that I'll cut later. At this point, it was time to assemble the main structure of the enclosure. I used the 3D printed parts that I designed to bolt the angle aluminum to the Prusa printer body, and then I assembled all of the angle aluminum that connected to corners until I had the rigid structure. With the main frame of the enclosure assembled, it was time now to start attaching polycarbonate sheets. The way I did this was by designing clips. They connect around the corner of the angle aluminum. So you have to drill a hole right at the 90 degree point, which is a little challenging. I also designed a triangular piece that fits on the inside of the angle aluminum. The purpose here was to give the nut something to press against so it wasn't just digging into the aluminum at a strange angle. Drilling a hole directly on a corner would be a nightmare, so I ended up filing down flats with a hand file. Then on the flat area, I could use a center punch, and the center punch will help hold the drill bit in place while I get a good clean hole drilled. Again, I used a hand drill just to prove that I could. It worked fine, but the drill press is much faster, so that's how I did the majority of my holes on the corners of the angle aluminum. A quick side note, I bought this drill press off Facebook Marketplace for something like $100 or $150. It's excellent return on investment. I definitely recommend trolling Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and the like for used tools. After drilling holes to hold the clamps for the polycarbonate, it was time to attach the clamps to the angle aluminum and then start cutting the polycarbonate sheets. Initially, I used a normal circular saw to cut the polycarbonate sheet, and this worked okay. The quality of the cut wasn't great, there were some cosmetic imperfections, some chips along the surface of the cut. As long as I clamped it really well, it seemed to work fine. Because I chose 8th inch thick polycarbonate, it was a little difficult. If I chose thinner polycarbonate, I think this would have been easier. Ultimately, I decided I wanted better quality out of my cuts, and it turned out a track saw was the right tool for the job. This was my first time using a track saw, and it was great. I don't own one, but I was able to borrow this one from a friend, and it has two key features. First is the track itself. It helped hold the polycarbonate in place and obviously get really nice straight cuts. The second critical thing is variable speed. I was able to slow down the rotational speed of the track saw so it cuts the plastic nice and slow. This led to really good quality. I was really pleased with the edges of the cuts. And as a reminder, wear your PPE. I definitely don't want to be inhaling the fine plastic particulate that this is generating while cutting, so I used one of those half-face respirator masks. After each cut, I did a test fit, and in a couple of instances, I needed to remove a little bit of extra material to make it fit nicely and flush. It was also easy to use the track saw to cut very small amounts of material. It would happily do just half the thickness of the blade to knock off a few millimeters. I built in all the polycarbonate panels, did a final fit check, and then it was time to move on to the door. For this, I found an enclosure hinge design on printables. Thanks CH King for that, or Chiking. 
For the hinges, I marked roughly where I wanted them to go, used a center punch, and drilled them out slightly oversized so there'd be a little variability so I could move the hinges around and fine-tune the position of the doors. Interestingly enough, the only holes I needed to drill in the polycarbonate are the holes to attach the hinges to the doors. After mounting the hinges to the aluminum, I held the doors in place and marked where those holes needed to go, drilled them, and bolted it together. I also made small spacers out of leftover polycarbonate to offset the hinges from the aluminum. To finish up the doors, I attached strips of U-channel aluminum. This was thinner 16th inch channel aluminum. This was mostly cosmetic and to give the fingers something to grab in place of a handle. And I simply used double-sided tape to secure these in place. Another side note, this isn't sponsored, but here I'm using Scotch Mount Indoor Outdoor Extreme Maximum Strength Multi-Surface Double-Sided Tape. This stuff is remarkably good. I moved the control panel over to the side and simply attached it to the extruded aluminum of the Prusa XL body. I might come up with a more elegant solution for this later, but this was something quick and dirty. The obvious best part of the build was removing the film that's on the polycarbonate to protect the surface. This is deeply satisfying. And that's about it for assembly and build. This ended up taking me a couple of days, spread across a couple of weekends, spread across a couple of months. Like I said earlier, if I had to do it all again, I'd probably just order one from Prusa to save myself the hassle, but I already made it this far, so I figured I'd finish it, upload this video, and release all the files. This would be slightly cheaper to do than to buy the Prusa enclosure. Though an important consideration there is, in addition to the time this takes, you'll need access to quite some tools. So far I've done a number of prints, mostly in PLA and PETG, but also a few in ASA. The enclosure's doing well, it keeps the chamber temperature high, which is nice. I've had no issues with the ASA prints. But something I'll mention is that I've seen posts on Reddit with people complaining about the temperature of the boards. In my case, my printer's in my basement, so it's kept nice and cool. I haven't had any issue with the board temperatures, but I'll pay attention, and if I need to, I can add a fan in the back of the printer to keep the board temperatures down. I'll also pay attention to the printed parts that are used in building the Prusa XL itself, make sure I'm not seeing any lifetime issues there. The parts that I designed and printed for the enclosure I made out of ASA, so I'm not concerned with the longevity of those parts. For this build, the tools you'll need are mostly straightforward. I would consider the majority of these tools common if you're a DIYer, though the notable exception is the drill press and the track saw. You can absolutely get away with this build without a drill press, a hand drill will do fine. Even if you don't have a miter saw, a hacksaw will do fine, it just took a little extra elbow grease. The really important tool for the build for me was the track saw. If you're using 8th inch thick polycarbonate for the build or similar, you'll really need something that has the ability to slow down the blade speed. A track saw, you might be able to get away with a jigsaw if it's got a speed control, but definitely do some tests before you jump into this if you don't already have a track saw to make sure you can get good cuts in polycarbonate. The polycarbonate's one of the highest costs, I'll talk about that in the materials, so you want to make sure you're not damaging it or getting poor quality before jumping into the entire build. The final topic I'll cover is materials. All of the 3D printed parts that I designed I printed in ASA so that they're robust and have good temperature resistance. As I mentioned in the start of the video, the main material I used 8th inch thick angle aluminum. This was one of the higher costs and the polycarbonate sheet was probably the highest cost. If you're going to do this project, I recommend you go to an industrial supplier to buy these. There are examples in the United States like McMaster or Granger that I would have chosen instead of the home store. It would have been much less costly to go to an industrial supplier. The rest of these materials you can also get through an industrial supplier or something like Amazon or AliExpress. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel for more content on building, making, and crafting. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.